Hi guys, Archie Luxury. Go to f2bbs.com. www.f2bbs.com. The last bastion of free speech on the interweb. That's right, guys. I want you to go to www.f2bbs.com. That's right. I want you to go there. You can, uh, this is a, a great site to fight against all sorts of nasty and nastiness by posting on f2bbs.com. The last bastion of free speech on the interweb. Go there, guys. Hi guys, Archie Luxury on the Paul Pruder channel doing paid reviews. Today guys, I'm doing a paid review. This is for Irvin and this is paid review 20 SE 104. Before we start this customary whist watch check, what am I wearing? I'm wearing my new sub. I can't take this thing off. It's the uh, Submariner 126610LN. The Black Bezel Black Dial Sub Date. Absolutely love this baby. Okay, let's jump in here. Hi, Arch. I hope all is well. I've sent you $50 to seek the Pontiff's advice. You previously did a review for me in 2019. Since then, my collection has changed. Per your advice, I added more Rolex to the backbone of my collection. However, I am in need of your sage advice once again. What should I buy next? How should my collection evolve moving forward? Are there any pieces in my collection you deem redundant that I should sell and use the funds for the next piece? Here's what's currently in the collection. Okay, watches from the last review that have stayed in my collection. A Rolex Rolex Explorer, that's the Explorer 1, 14270, from my Berthier of 1991. Um, he's got a Grand Seiko SBGN005 high accuracy quartz. And he's got an Omega Speedmaster Panda Mitsusha Mitsukosha. That's the yes, he did the modification on that. That's with the dial to make it a bit of a, a panda. That was the the Mitsukosha was the department store in Japan that had a special edition. Uh, I think from memory he 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 got the dial. It's it's not an original Mitsukosha watch, but it's, he kept the parts, however, if you've got the bits, I think, I think from, I mean, man, this was, this was a year ago, two years ago, 2019, uh, acquisition since the last review, okay, so firstly, let's just quickly go over that, the, the Explorer, Explorer 1, the early Explorer 1s, they can be quite valuable the first year they had with the the numbers the numbers instead of it being i think the numbers they had a white inner part instead of being solid uh metal the numbers on the 369 they can be quite collectible you but i mean that that's that's kind of a bit of an added bonus if yours is one of the collectible ones. Well, they're all collectible. All Rolexes are collectible. The Grand Seiko is a great watch. And also the uh, the Omega. I'm not a big fan of modding stuff. Not a big fan because people tend to... People tend not to put it back. And I that's the only qualm I've got. But that's okay. That's okay. Acquisition since the last review. Here we go. Look at this. We've got a Rolex GMT Master 2 126711 CHNR root beer. That's the two tone. We've got a Milgauss, Rolex Milgauss 116400 GV Z Blue. We have got a Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 15450. That's the 37 mil. The, they call it the mid-size, but I reckon that's kind of that's kind of the smaller men's because the bigger men's was 
41 mils. <clears throat> it's a bit big. Uh, and you've got the Rolex Submariner 116613LB from 2010 with the flat blue Smurf dial. And also a Rolex Daytona 116520 black enclosed uh, photo. So I, 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 I think realistically um, you've added some good Rolex and that's a very good thing. So, so, so let's just go through that. We'll give things a tick or a no. So uh, I got to tell you, the, 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 the modded Speedy with the Mitsukosha dial, it's cute. It's cute. I'll give you that. Um, we've got the two-tone Smurfy. The Smurfy Ceramic Bluesy. Yes, that's a beautiful watch. Beautiful watch. Abs I think that could become quite collectible. Absolutely beautiful. We've got the Grand Seiko. That's the SBGN005. That's the Quartz. Look, it's quite an attractive. That's a GMT. Very attractive i like the the dial on it the red hand it's very cool watch it's nice to have i don't i wouldn't terribly buy more grand seiko but that's okay the daytona ah oh, it's beautiful beautiful look at the crisp just looking at the teleprompter here crisp photo absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful the root beer Gorgeous. It's the only thing I can say about the root beer is it is absolutely gorgeous. The Explorer One, absolutely beautiful. 36 mil. This is the replacement to the 1016. I love it. I love it. The Mill Girls, the Z Blue, absolutely beautiful. Uh, I, I look. I, I, I do love. The Milgauss, it's always had a bit of a soft spot for it. I don't think it matters what color you've got, whether you've got the GV, the non-GV. Uh, the white seems to be a little bit softer, but I reckon that's got huge potential, the white. The blue, how could you not love the blue? Then we've got the, the AP. The AP 15450. I had a 14790 ST, which was the 36 mil. And... You know, I think the 37 mil could be absolutely perfect. So that's that's my run on events. So we've got some really nice pieces here. Okay, so you're saying, I am in need of your sage advice. What should I buy next? What should I buy next? Okay, well, let, let now I when I answer this, you can buy whatever you like, but I try and give you advice as as what I think is is lacking. Sometimes people can't see the wood for the trees. So it's always good to get a professional opinion there. <clears throat> what do I think here? Explorer one, we've got a, a Grand Seiko and we've got the the Speedy. So we've got, then we've got the, the Royal Oak. Uh, we've got a GMT. We've got a Milgauss, Daytona. We've got a bluesy Smurf, Smurfy, Smurf. Look, you've got a really great collection. When I look at a collection, I often say, get the basics. Diver, GMT, and Chronograph. That's the three basics. Now, if we look at this, uh, and the other thing I like to have is wind and wear, manual wind, wind and wear watches. So if we look at your collection, you've got the GMT Master II, and we've got the Grand Seiko, which is a it's a GMT version, I think. Yes, it is. It's it's a GMT version. Okay, so we've got two GMTs. Then, if we have a look at uh, chronographs, we've got the the Panda uh, Speedy with the Mitsukosha dial. Uh, we've got the Daytona. So two really cool chronographs. When it comes to divers, well, we've got one with the the subby, the bluesy, the bluesy. Then we've got just beautiful Rolex wind and wear 
we've got the uh, Explorer 1, and we've got the Milgauss. So i got to be honest with you, you've got a really nice collection there. It's a, it's a very cool collection. There's not a, a problem at all. Uh, and, of course, we've got the, the AP. The AP is like a, a grail piece. Now, what would I add there? What would I add? You could look at it and say, you know, if you really wanted to blow this baby out of the, the ballpark, I'd possibly add a, a Patek Philippe 5196. Manual wind, precious metal, classic Calatrava, 37 mil. So it's not going to be too big. It actually wears a lot bigger than the actual size. Um, perfect to, to just to, to round it off with a... I mean, I'm, I'm not saying the, the AP is not a super grail. That's a really good piece. I think the paddock just gives you a paddock, an AP. It gives you just a little bit of diversity there. Um... So I, I, I would say a paddock would be a great contender. Another thing I would say would be a great watch for you to have, have would be some sort of JLC Reverso, okay? Because you could the Reverso may even be, you can get that as well as the paddock or instead of the paddock. Um, the Reverso, of course, you get that in, usually people get that in steel. And that fits in with your genre of sports, steel sports. So I know you've got some two-tone, but it, it just it just ties in with the collection. Um, what should I buy next? Look, look, I've got to tell you, I don't think you need to buy anything, but Paddock was, was certainly one thing. You ask the question and I'll tell you. The JLC reverse. So should you add anything in Rolex? Would I add more in Rolex? Well, You've got your, your bases really covered there. I think it's it's probably done in Rolex. Unless you want to add... Unless you want to add... What would you add? What would you add? Maybe a Datejust, steel Datejust with a blue dial would be nice. But you don't even need that because you've got the, the Milgauss with the blue dial. Um, I'm kind of kind of content with your your pieces there how should i evolve my collection moving forward well my best advice to you is a lot of people make the mistake they have a really nice collection and then they just get bored and instead of instead of just being content with what they got they trade they trade and they do stupid trades they sell things which they then regret getting rid of and <clears throat> That's kind of my advice is sometimes it's often better hold. Don't buy any more if you have to trade. It's always nice to add more. But if you, you know, th th these are damn expensive things. This is not, this is not a joke. These are really expensive watches. If you can't afford to add, if you can't afford to add another Rolex or a Paddock or a JLC, just stop. Don't need to sell nothing. Just hold. I think a lot of people race out there, they want the instant gratification, so they sell something to pay for something, and if you're not careful, that can be a bit of a mistake. So how should my collection evolve? My advice to you was I wouldn't be selling anything, I'd just add slowly. Now, you don't have to add a paddock or reverso, you could add another Rolex. Rolex is such a sound investment. Um, you, yeah, another great watch you could add would be like a Zenith El Primero because you've got a really good backbone in your collection. So that's kind of what I, I would be doing. Are there any pieces in my collection you deem redundant that I should sell and use the funds? Well, that, that, that's a good question. Look, look, you could say, how many chronographs do you need? How So we've got two chronographs, the Speedy, and the Daytona. Well, I, I wouldn't be getting rid of the Daytona. And the Speedy, you love that modded dial. Just keep it. I wouldn't be selling that. Then you say, well, hang on a minute. How about the the um, the GMTs? We've got a Seiko and we've got the, the Rolex. Well, you wouldn't sell the Rolex. The Root Beer, very beautiful watch. 
and the Grand Seiko, that gives you another flavor. I, I really like the Grand Seiko. Yes, it's quartz. I'm normally not a big fan of quartz, but I think it adds a bit of diversity. It gives you, it's, it gives you a bit of flavor to the mix. So I, I, I don't see the point in selling the Grand Seiko. Uh, then you could say, well, hang on a minute. I've got a couple steel Rolex wind and wear. I got the, the Explorer one and I've got the Milgauss. Okay, fair enough. You say, well, let's get rid of the Explorer. But that could be a mistake. Early Explorer ones, uh, I don't know if I'd be selling that. That's a, just a beautiful, honest piece. I'd, I'd be keeping that. I'd just keep it in the, in the fold. So that's, that's your birth year, 1991. So I, I would say myself, um, I don't see anything redundant. I think it's a really nice collection. I mean, it's your money, okay? I, I love the famous line, you know, people say, but I'm not wearing it. So what does that mean? You gotta wear it, otherwise you gotta flip it? Man, so what? I don't wear a lot of my watches. They're paddocks. I just like to possess, hoard, and I, I don't have to wear everything. It's it's. I set the ground rules. Um, so I, I honestly, I, my, my advice to you would be to hold, hold, hold what you've got. If money's tight and, 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 and I'll be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, Irvin, that's a lot of money in here. This is not a cheap little collection for one man to have a Rolex sports is pretty damn good. Look at, you've got, you've got Explorer one. GMT root beer, which is a deal watch. You've got the Milgauss, you've got the Sub Bluesy. That's an expensive one. And your Daytona is very expensive. A lot of money tied up there. To have one of those would be great. You've got so many pieces. Just hold. I, I, I can't stress that enough. People seem to get bored. They want instant gratification. I think that's the wrong way of doing it so my advice to you is to hold i think you got a beautiful collection add add a paddock would be great it knocks it out it just sets you you know but <clears throat> you may not you know i i think you, you like your two tones you got a steel and rose gold and you got a steel and yellow a solid gold calatrava would be a beautiful addition in that collection i i honestly think that would be the way I go. So i got to be honest with you. It's very cool. It's a cool collection. Okay, guys, like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Don't be afraid to put some comments below. And please, guys, remember, I can't survive on Google Ads. I need these paid reviews. These paid reviews is what keeps me making the vids. Without the paid reviews, I would sink. So please... 50 US dollars, a paid review. You can send me a couple of questions and I'll try and answer it. Okay, guys, I will see you in the next one. Hi, guys, Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. The Rolex Submariner date. Probably the most versatile, the most famous, the most wanted watch of 2020. The Rolex Submariner absolutely stunning I've gone for the steel model I wanted something that could be worn every day the businessman's delight look at the side profile look at that absolutely gorgeous I've got to tell you I am in love with this submariner black on black does it get any any better black on black the rolex submarina this is what the the this is just such a beautiful look at the 
I got to tell you, the maxi, that just the whole thing, this whole thing is everything. The ceramic sub should have been from day one. Absolutely winner, winner, chicken, chicken dinner. Absolutely. And it's got the new clasp with the glide lock for easy adjustments. Absolutely winner, winner, chicken dinner. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co. That's correct. Vintage Watch Co. in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co. Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.